And hey, welcome back to Secrets of Louisville Chefs Live here in the Kitchen Theater. This is a place I'm not used to being, and that's behind the bar with our CEO, Tim Laird. <laughs> what a show we've Great. had. Danielle, oh, awesome it's been fun. wonderful. You can tell she has a little bit of artiste in her. She can't sure you? does. Right, look yeah, at this. What a what a background. What a great uh, meal she did. I mean, that was incredible. Just and we found some great secrets with that too. I love yeah. that, Kevin. Well, it's beautiful. Can't wait to take a taste. Now yeah. you are full of creativity yourself. We all know that. You've prepared some fantastic drinks that are going to go along with this meal. We have some fun things. You know, I was thinking about a wine accompaniment with the uh, yellowtail, and it's a it's more of a firm fish, and there's a lot of flavors. And then with the crunch. Of the uh, the bacon that she put on there, or the uh, parma and all that, I thought, you know what? There's a lot of salt going on, so I'm going to go with a pinot noir. So I think a pinot noir, this is a little black dress, would go perfectly with the uh, textures and, and uh, all the spices and the tomatoes with that. However, I'm also going to use this in a cocktail, Kevin. Okay. So uh, you you know what? You don't have to have just the wine and the fish. Uh, and this is a wonderful drink we did. Uh, for Concourse d'Elegance, uh, which is a uh, basically helps uh, Brooklawn and uh, fundraiser for them. But let, let me ask a quick question before sure. you jump into this. You mentioned you could just drink the wine with the fish. There's yes. always this, uh, you know, you oh, if you're eating fish, you need to have a white wine. Now you like to dispel some of those myths. I'm glad you asked, Kevin, because I do like to dispel those myths. Because really, what you want to what you want to pair up is how the food is textured and flavors. So if there's a lot of big flavors, you know what, a white wine might get washed away. Which in this dish, you know, the acid that's going on and all those pestos and everything else, I think you know, a, a light white wine, you wouldn't even be able to taste it. Whereas this Pinot Noir will stand up to uh, the textures and taste. Great. So you always want to pair on how the food is actually seasoned. And you know, if it's a meat meaty fish, you can go with a bigger wine. If it's a light, delicate white fish, then you bring out your light white. So Perfect. basically it's on uh, on that. Hey, but there's no rules, just have fun. Absolutely. Eat and drink well, I what you like. I never like <laughs> so to interrupt a, a, the no. making of a nice cocktail, no, but, but I wanted uh, to get that but, but, out no, of the way. No, that's a good point, because that's, again, one of the secrets is just have fun with your food and wine pairing and try different things. So, uh, and speaking of different things, this is a different thing. Uh, you would never think that I could take bourbon, this is Woodford Reserve, mix it with wine and come up with a cocktail. So I'm gonna show you this one real quick. In uh, my shaker with ice, I'm gonna put in about one and a half to two ounces of of Woodford Reserve. To that, I'm going to put in about three ounces of our little black dress Pinot Noir, <laughs> which, yeah, this sounds nutty, doesn't it? I'm telling you, crazy. And then uh, a squeeze of lemon. And then I already had in there about an ounce of, uh, oh, uh, simple syrup. So that was our sweetener that was in there. So okay. a little bit of simple syrup was in the bottom. Give this a good shake. You're going to see it's a wonderful color, too. I like the color of this cocktail. So really, it's simple syrup, about one ounce, three ounces, two to three ounces of your uh, Pinot Noir, and one and a half to two ounces of uh, the Woodford. Wow. Nice garnet color. Almost looks cranberry-ish. It does. Like a, almost a rich, dark red garnet with a little, little bit of foam on the top, which I love. And then for the garnish on this one, just a little bit of lemon peel. Goes in like that. It never ceases to amaze me how you come up with this and stuff. And here we go. So again, cheers. Cheers. Wow, bourbon in a whole new light. I'll Who'd tell have you. thought? That's incredible. So, you know? anyway. Wow, you all got to try this. Uh, this is and, good. And this, I'll tell you what. Now I wanted to uh, show you another drink. Um, and I'm always, you know, I'm always searching for uh, new things. And you know, champagne. By the way, this is Corbel. That actually will go with any type of food. So if you're in a dilemma right. of what to pair with your food. Go to the champagne, it pairs with everything. Does this so. happen while you're driving down the road in the middle of the night? When, when does this stuff <laughs> yeah, come exactly. to you, you know? It, it, it's like, amazing. oh, let's go get some jelly and mix it, it with it. Exactly. <laughs> mix it up with something Whatever else. It is. Uh, we always like to be creative. And speaking of that, um, I went online and find, found these wild hibiscus uh, flowers and <laughs> syrup. And I thought, oh, this would be fun. And we call this the fleur de lis, kind of uh, because of the champagne. And the hibiscus flower actually looks like a little fleur de lis. So I put that in the bottom of the glass. And perfect for our great city. Exactly. And fill it with champagne. You're going to see that this flower actually opens up a little bit. And it really is neat. And it's edible, too, by the way. The, uh, the hibiscus flower is, is edible. It has a nice flavor to it since it's been uh, sitting in its syrup. So cheers, Kevin. We'll try a little uh, fleur de now, lis, if you will. Now, did that tint the Corbel, or are we it drinking a rosé? It okay. gives a little bit of a uh, uh, little tinting on there, a little, yeah, little garnet like color from the syrup. Great flavor, yeah. doesn't yeah. it? Nice. Not only can you not go wrong pairing it, you oh. can't go wrong drinking a little Corbel, right? Exactly. And when you end, you get to eat the uh, hibiscus flower that's been marinated in the uh, Corbel. So, a wonderful thing. So, cheers, Kevin. Cheers. Go. Right. We'll drink enough of those, we'll be planting those. <laughs> we will. Dig it out in the yard, we're going to have hibiscus. <laughs> I love it. 
I love it. Listen, we appreciate uh, your help today, Tim. Thank you, Thank you so much. Uh, for Tim Laird, Dean Corbett, and the rest of us here at BMB Productions, we appreciate you watching. If you're looking for the recipes, they're easy to find. Simply jump online to newlocaltv.com. You'll find all the recipes from Danielle and all the other great chefs that we've had here on our show. Until next time, thanks so much for watching Secrets of Louisville Chefs Live. Secrets of Louisville Chefs Live is recorded in front of a live studio audience.